Welcome back folks, MTG Joe here. Today we are going to be jamming some red white Boros artifacts in historic best of one. This is a best of three list from Ulf MTG, another content creator. Definitely check them out. They got number one mythic in best of three with this deck, but I want to see how it is on the best of one ladder. So what do we get by being Boros and artifact themed? Well, you got Esper Sentinel, the best one drop in white, I think. A uh, really good taxing effect gives you card advantage. We get Toolcraft Exemplar, which is a 3-2 for one mana because there's so many artifacts in our deck. Retrofitter Thop uh, Foundry is kind of a combo. If you get this on turn one with an Ornithopter, you basically get to skip right to the last mode and create a 4-4 colorless artifact creature on uh, turn one, basically. Uh, otherwise, you make servos and you upgrade them over time. Shadow Sphere to get some chunk damage in there, lifelink. Uh, you have Mishiko, which could pump your team. Ingenious Smith finds you stuff. Uh, Barbed Spiked is two creature, is a creature and an equipment in one. Um, it also makes Thopters, which work with the Retrofitter the Foundry. You got some portable holes. You got some Yotai Declares War, makes another Thopter, can be a removal, and then um, upgrades to 4-4 four, four till end of turn. We are playing some Dark Steel Citadels mixed in there, uh, and just kind of see how it goes. Let's take it to the ladder. Uh, we've had a pretty good run tonight. We are coming in at 263 to start off, but let's see how this plays into a field of Elves and Wizards and Rakdos and all that jazz. Uh, if you do want to see best of three or just a very detailed guide, definitely do recommend Alt MTG A L T H. Uh, frequently gets into number one or top of the tier with uh, their own brews. I think this is fine. Th Sentinel on one. Opponent goes first. Okay, so this is the land destruction deck most likely. I'm just going to play one of these out this turn, and I'm going to hold the other for Ingenious Smith so I can trigger it next turn. Indestructible Artifact Land. Could just be Ramp. We shall see. So we'll take the Citadel here. Like I said, we'll do this to upgrade that. Not the best hand, to be honest. It's a little awkward right now. But if they have something like Chandra here, they could be like a Stone Rain deck. Get them to pay the tax. You can also just Barbed Wire and equip it onto my Esper Sentinel to tax them more for card draw. All right, well, they're ramping to something. Containment Breach. We'll do this. Just play this out. We're quite slow this go around. We need like a Mashiko or something. I'm doing this. We'll play Loris out next turn. Okay, we draw a card. Retrofitter. We'll do this. I can lure us next turn and cast the Sentinel. They can containment breach. I'm not too worried about it. I can also get back in Genius Smith if I hit we hit land. But they are a stone rain deck. That is notable.
Yep, they're just going after my lands. So we're gonna make them target the Retrofitter and then I can sack the Ornithopter. Drawing a line there was very good. We needed that. They could be cleansing Wildfire, that's why they're playing these artifact lines. You target it with your own, you get to ramp and draw cards. Lion Destruction's pretty bad, like if you're targeting the lions you're usually not doing enough. So here we gotta build our own board. It's a very slow hand from us. We'll just wait here. Could be mascot exhibition. Uh, they're gonna just hit me anyways. So let's just do that. I guess I could have made another 1-1 one -one that turn, just differentiate my threats, but I'm trying to draw into Mashiko here. Yotai could be good. We could just be getting Start of Extinction. Or they have Bloodthirsty Adversary. And they are going to blow up two of my lands. That is a card. Problem is they could also start from scratch and blow up this portable hole. So they just go the field trip route, which is our containment breach here. This doesn't even give flying. Friends, we are in a lot of trouble. We're just dead. All right, the draw nothing plan didn't come to fruition. We had all set up, no payoff. Not having blue so far has felt bad. You don't have thought monitor to just refill your hand. Them blowing up our lands, I don't think was like huge in that game per se, because we weren't, like I guess the tap untap was a little relevant for our thing, but the learn package was pretty good. So we'll lead on Sentinel. Again, save this combination. Let's just trigger it right away. Sentinel is going to put some tax on them. You too, Guillaume. Have a good one. Start with attacking. This is likely the Rakdos mid-range deck, so they will have a lot of removal. So they did have the push here, and they're able to pay the tax. Opponent's in a fairly decent spot here. Next turn, we're likely going to go these two. So 
given that, we're going to slightly pivot. We're going to go Mashiko and Toolcraft Exemplar. Mashiko going. Can upgrade our dude next turn. If they try to kill it, I have the option of the foundry. If not, I just have flyer going. This basically blinks their removal. Yeah, see Trespasser come down. This is the old drop your whole hand. Attack into here, I can use this Thopter, make it a 4 4. When I win, you're telling me what you know about the Raven Man. Alright, that one felt better. Got through two removal spells there. Still think we might want blue in this deck, but want to give it some more games, see how it plays out, obviously. Kimya. I mean, if you could start every game with Esper Sentinel, I would never want another turn one play in Historic. Oh, blue-white control, you say? Um, what I am terrified is Divine Purge. <laughs> Not gonna lie, Divine Purge kind of scares me. We got Proctor. Uh, notably... I want to do this. I think we need to. Like, it's really bad if they have Divine Purge. Because they get their thing back. But I don't want them to get Lotus Field. Attacking here. Not playing out this land yet because if they have Divine Purge, it sweeps me up here. So we'll do this. Do this. Split up my threats. Wandering Emperor comes. Get to draw a card. This is what you get for hurting my people. So we do need to commit a little bit more to the board. We might have been right to play Retrofitter, but we are going to see the Wandering Emperor most likely. Teferi Master of Time, a card you don't see too often. They do have the ability to phase out here. I'm just going to make a... So, notably here... 
Teferi can phase out target creature I control. We're just doing this. Just passing the turn here. They need to find a sweeper. If they have Divine Purge, I die anyways. I'm not beating a Divine Purge. We need to limit the amount of turns they're going to have. Or farewell, not divine purge. So ruins our day. Again, can't do much about that when they have it. They eat my graveyard because this is just such a fun, stimulating card. Like. They likely have removal here, or they also have the Teferi Minus. They can phase out. They'll have access to Emperor now with the Teferi Untap. So we're basically dead. Like, I hate this card's so dumb. The Deluge here. Notably, this will be phased out during their turn, so a Sweeper doesn't hit it. But they've approached the Second Sun! We need to move quickly. Mashiko for the win. Time to improvise. How about another land? Doesn't matter here. Doesn't matter. Yeah, we're just... Because they have the minus here anyways. And then they alt Tef. Yeah, we're dead. Farewell's just dumb. Like, I don't care losing a blue-white control, but, like, make it so we can play some stuff. Like... A card like Retrofitter Foundry should be a good card against blue-white control. It doesn't play into sweepers, lets you play at instant speed. But that game is just like the opponent saying, doesn't matter what you've done to this point. Alright. Let's do it. Let's do it. Doesn't do anything this turn anyway, so we'll just hold it. I'm gonna hold this. We see black removal. We'll wait, see what they play out. This is a nice combo. Citadel enables our Spire of Industry from a mana base perspective. Black shouldn't have a way to deal with artifacts. We'll go chapter one here. All right, now we're all in. We are all in. We'll put Luris to hand next turn.
So they could have a sweeper, which is fine. Yotai will make our Shadow Sphere 4-4. Four, four. We'll get to draw a card off Esper Sentinel. And then I can cast Luris and then get back Thopter. Hopefully draw a land. Perfect. Never didn't have it. So here... Go Luris. Go Sentinel here. Because I can tool craft if needed. We're not in a like fantastic spot just because sweepers can get us. Westgate Regent is a card that we cannot answer, can we? Tap any number of untapped artifacts you control. One, two, three, four. Discard a card. Uh, you give plus one, you give plus one trample lifelink. So I'm doing this because it taxes them more. So we can draw cards potentially. And then I can make a 4-4 next turn. Get some action going there. Bufferand! Big brains, big brains plays. Give this one or two more, see how long the games go. I really wanna play against Wizards. I wanna see how that match goes. We've done a very good job of always having turn one Esper Sentinel. But a lot of just playing this has made me want more copy, like blue for card draw. We run out of cards very quickly. What did I say? As for Sentinel, turn one. Energy! Got an energy gamer. Fragment reality. So Martin, okay. Hey Max, uh, we did. We played some Blue White Power 9 control. Uh, you can check on the VOD like it, if you want to see it. Otherwise, I'll have it up later this week to see the full game. Uh, we went 2-0 and with it, and the games took forever. Um, but one game, we kind of took a bunch of extra turns. We cast Time Twister. We, drew, we Ancestral Recalled twice. Um, it was kind of cool like that. I don't want to spend too many wild cards on alchemy sets, to be honest, because Shadows Over Innistrad is coming, and I want to build my Explorer collection. It's expensive being trying to play every deck on Arena for content. So try to save some money there. See if we can find an opponent.
Yeah, it's... Uh, I think you need to play it in a card with like lots of Seek and stuff. Divine Purge really helps to just kind of control the game. Let's try this one out. I know I'm not following my rule. Because like Divine Purge even resetting the bird that lets you cast it again. Um, but I think uh, all the like cards that let you Seek... Okay, opponent's probably on a combo deck. Or not. Yo, what the hell is that? Um, that's pretty sick. Oh wait, shit, this is indestructible. What the hell? Oh, it's got Zatalpa. Oh, I should read cards. Portable hole? Yeah. Get good at magic. So good at magic. I didn't read the card! That's cool. No! I could like never beat this now. I promise got like flying. What do I got? I got three more portable holes. Why are they playing portable hole? Ah, shit. Then they put the counters there. That's not good. That's sick. We got outplayed. We got outplayed. That was a Talpa. The way I see it, like, if I play the deck enough that I get enjoyment out of, I might lose some, but also, like, I'll play a bit more. If you're got to be more cautious with your wild cards, then it makes sense, and I wouldn't advise doing it. But like the Red Alchemy deck, it's I only play those cards in the Red Alchemy deck, but I got number one Mythic with it. I finished top 1200 with it, so I, bought, I basically won a bunch of gems, and I've done well in Arena Opens with it, so it kind of paid for itself. Um, the Esper deck cards get played a lot, uh, Divine Purge gets played a lot. I play some of the cards in Brawl, um, but I was entering a lot of uh, Alchemy events when I was fine, because... At one point, I had like an 85% win rate with the mono red deck. So I was just farming events. So I got a bunch of play points and stuff like that. So I got a bunch of the set for free. But this one, I just don't... None of the cards really jump out to me. They seem more gimmicky. Like, that counter spell is just a pain in the ass. Opponent's deck was sweet, though. I did not read that card. We'll keep this. So, see, basic mountain here. This could be like a stomp situation with burning tree. Looks like that's what's gonna happen. Oh no, second burning tree. You got the stomp. They got the stomp. Um, here. So I'm going to do.
do this for the turn? They're likely going to cast the Bone Crusher. I can Yotai to Chapter 2, tap my artifacts, kill the Bone Crusher Giant. And then I can Mishiko on the backside. I can get Luris going eventually. That could work. Double Burning Tree into Bone Crusher on the play is a very good draw. We didn't have the Esper Sentinel. Definitely gonna want to kill Annex here, so I can trade with one of those. But I think I need the machi the Yotai. That's actually very good because now I can do this. One, two, three. Kill you. Tax trade with a burning tree here. Like we're pretty dead to cleave. Okay, it's a good start. Means we're not gonna get nutted here. Pretty much a free attack. My plan here is Esper Sentinel put Luris to hand because then I could cast Luris and if we hit a land I can Yotai. If not I can just keep getting chump chump blockers. I also have the option after uh, Mishiko with Luris. Okay, that's likely Going to be cleave. Okay, another burning tree. Ah, tap land. My mortal enemy, a tap land. You're two to equip. No cleave, no cleave one time. Come on out, good start. Head explodes. The Luris lock would be too much. Basically we could just get to cycle the kill spell every turn and kind of take them out that way. All right. I think we'll wrap this one up on this deck. We got some good games in with it. I played the new Goblin um, in the free event. It was pretty good, especially in a Goblin shell, just conjuring copies. I got to try it in mono red. Um, so wrapping this one up, deck felt pretty solid. The only thing I'd say, I kind of missed having access to something like a Thought Monitor to draw cards. I think that would just help refill. There's a lot of times where we just ran out of gas uh, and having that would have helped our situation. So don't wrap this one up for the YouTube uh, recorded folks. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a great one and stay safe out there.